Oh, hey, we have an actually kind of cool Mattel figure to take a look at. Oh, and Mr. Popple just fell off. Oopsie. Alright, and today we have a new figure to look at, finally. It's been like months. Oh my god, my camera is so it's falling down like crazy. Um, anyways, we're taking a look at another figure because it's been like a few months since we've done a review, so. Yay! Uh, we have a new Mattel figure and it's a big Triceratops because I, I wanted a big Triceratops because, um, Triceratopses are cool. And believe it or not, this is actually my first... Jurassic World, Jurassic Park, actually, Triceratops. Yeah, I don't have any other Mattel Triceratopses or Hasbro Triceratopses or Kenner Triceratopses. Actually, no, never mind. We do have uh, <laughs> this guy, but we don't talk about him, so uh, he doesn't count. But yeah, I just don't like Mattel's design for the Triceratops. They're way too small. They have really boring paint jobs most of the time. So yeah, uh, but this one, this one's really cool actually, and uh, if my camera will get positioned in the right way, I can really show you how absolutely massive this thing is. Okay, I think it's stable. I hope. Okay. Anyways, this Triceratops, um, is really cool. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. It's my first one Triceratops. Um, like I said, we don't talk about that other guy. He doesn't matter because he's too insignificant and doesn't matter. So we're not going to talk about him. But this dude right here, um, it's pretty cool actually. It's absolutely massive. But anyways, the Habitat Defender Triceratops. Uh, anyways, um, we've got the Dino Tracker packaging, you know, blah, blah, blah. Just normal Mattel packaging. It's made of some sort of a special plastic. I don't know. But, uh... Oh, on the other side here, you can see a nice uh, picture of it. Honestly, this one looks more like a the Hammond Collection one, uh, except instead of this one, but it does. I don't know. Uh, as you can see, some stuff about the plastic it's made out of, blah, 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 and more stuff. And uh, let's just go ahead and get this open. Actually, no. When I first opened this up, the smell. Oh my god, the smell. It came in this bag plastic bag and oh my god the smell was oh it was so glorious i just want to smell it over and over again like uh, it smells so good it kind of reminds me of like a fireworks store is that concerning should i be concerned but honestly i'm not gonna be concerned i'm just gonna get this open also while i struggle to get this out it's actually the day before the day before christmas so merry christmas everyone anyways uh i'm gonna what in the world this thing will not freaking come out what is holding it in aha we have a tail we're making po progress guys we're making progress aha we have it out I present to you Triceratops. Um, now we have to get these stupid things off. I absolutely hate these. But anyways, we got it out and it's absolutely massive. Now time to click it. It's turd looking tail in. <laughs> it's like a, looks like a turd. <laughs> okay, let's get this in. How, is there a specific way this needs to go in? I don't think so. Just click it in whichever way. Um, May actually, maybe there is a correct way. Let's see. It's like maybe this way. Ah, there we go. Love that click. Means that it's in. Time to take a look at our Triceratops. My god, is this thing massive. <laughs> I knew it was giant, but I didn't realize it was gonna be this big. My god. I guess let's just go ahead and take a look at this beauty. Uh, it's... Okay, it's not that beautiful, honestly, but... <laughs> It is actually fairly decent for a Mattel figure. The tail, I feel, could be a little bigger or longer. It's definitely big. It's quite chonky, if I'm gonna say it. Alright, let's go ahead and take a look at this thing. Okay, so starting up in the head here, it actually looks fairly decent in, uh, for a Mattel figure, at least. Um, 
the paint detail on this is actually really nice. So it's all sort of like this base chocolatey brown color. Uh, and it's got sort of a reddish brown sprayed onto the back of the frill here and around the eye. It's sort of speckled around. It's kind of hard to see on camera, but it's there. And uh, around the beak, all, the beak is painted, the horns are painted, and all these little hornlets around the uh, frill are painted. Very, very nice. Uh, the, the eye is just kind of meh. It's just a standard uh, metal eye. It's nothing really too super exciting. Um, you can see under the underside of it, it is actually painted sort of a tan color, sort of orangey. And actually... This one's paint is actually really nice for a Mattel figure. It has these osteoderms on the back all painted, except for these two. <laughs> I don't know why they didn't paint those, but, uh, and, and, and these. Uh, but you know what? It actually looks really nice. And uh, also these on the um, leg here are painted. It would be nice to see some of these on the arms painted, but you know what? We got, uh, we got some pretty decent paint job on here. And what I really like is that instead of having paint on the underside, it's actually a separate piece of plastic. And honestly, I really like that. They did that with the Boreal Pelta, and uh, this one looks, it looks really nice. Like sometimes the paint can be like sloppy and doesn't look like right, and it, it kind of looks sprayed on weird. Uh, but this makes it look really, really nice. And I really like that. I hope Mattel does some more of that because I honestly really like it. Now, the toenails aren't painted, but you could argue that they're actually better than being painted because they're actually a separate piece of molded plastic. So that means that it won't rub off over time and it looks pretty nice. The only downside is if you flip it over, it kind of looks weird because, uh, yeah, it, it, it just doesn't look right. Uh, it's not the same color as the rest of the feet, but, um... You know what? It, it's better than what we normally get. And honestly, you don't really see the bottom of the feet that often, so it's fine. Um, oh yeah, and it also has a uh, painted tongue there. And it actually has an articulated jaw, which I know I'm, I'm, I know I'm gonna make a lot of people mad. <laughs> but uh, this would look much better without an articulated jaw. Because Mattel is terrible at making herbivores have articulated jaws. Like, come on, seriously. This is not how the jaw opens. That's not how it opens. You did it with the Brachiosaurus and the Dreadnoughtus, right? Why can't you do it with the Triceratops? It looks weird. That's not how their jaws open. It's broken and weird. I don't like it. It looks wrong. But, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Mattel, please. Like, seriously, like, take a look at this BOTM figure. You can see the jaw starts back here. It's not that hard. It would just be as easy to do that as see if, I mean, they, they make the carnivores open like normal. Why not? I, I don't know. But honestly, it's cool, I guess. Um, it doesn't close all the way and it barely opens anyway. Like, it, it, it's fine. It's. I'm just gonna keep it closed, but it just is weird. It just looks so wrong. I don't like it. But anyways, uh, detail is it's fairly nicely sculpted. The horns have a really nice cracked texture, and I think they actually had that in the movie. Um, so that's cool. And the beak, it's also sculpted. You know, it's sculpted. It's, it's kind of smooth, but it's fine. Um, it has some very nice texture on its face, so the nostril, um, sculpted out there. The eyes have some nice wrinkles around them. Now, I kind of just noticed this, but are all of the Jurassic Park Triceratopses like this? I don't know, because I've never gotten a Tripatel Triceratops, or a Jurassic Park Triceratops for that matter, except for that one, but we don't talk about him again. We don't talk about him. Uh, it, they don't have, like, a, uh, cheekbone pointing out, like, I forget what it's called, but the cheekbone isn't, like, there at all. Like, is that normal, or is this just something weird that is on this figure? I don't know, but, uh, yeah. Moving on, <laughs> the rest of the body is sculpted, you know, you got some osteoderms there, you got some scales and skin texture, very nice. 
skin skin texture. Um, it's little turd thing coming off of its back. <laughs> its tail looks so weird for some reason. I don't know. It's, uh, it's really nicely sculpted, actually. Um, it's probably the best part about it. As for articulation, like I showed you, it's got the weird jaw. My camera won't focus. Uh, you know, its jaw opens fairly wide, even though it's completely wrong and looks weird. Blah blah blah. Uh, the the neck actually has some really nice articulation with up, and the down is really nice. And up goes up very nice. The side to side is good. It's not like super nice, but it, it's it's very decent. Of course, you can. Turn its head upside down or whatever. Uh, I don't know why you would want to do that, but you can do that. Um, the legs aren't super articulated. You know, you can go forward and back, but not anything like crazy. You can't move them outwards in any way. The legs are kind of the same. They're just kind of there. They don't really, you can't really do anything with them. And then there's the tail, which is on the ball joint. So you can just like Turn it any ways you could possibly want, up and down, side to side, swivel all the way around. You can do so much stuff with the tail, but it's just a little stub. <laughs> oh yeah, and this little thing, this little turd coming off, it can actually be rotated here. I did it earlier. There. <laughs> There's literally no reason to have this, but they put it there anyway, so I guess I'm not complaining. But yeah, it's a pretty cool figure, actually. Um. For size, let's just go ahead and take a size of it. I'm going to zoom out because you can't even see it. It's so massive. And uh, my camera quality is going to be terrible, but it doesn't really matter because we're just measuring. So from the tip of the horns to the tip of the tail is about 17 inches. Right at 17 inches right there. So, yeah. And uh, for a height from the... And the, the bottom to the top of the frill is just at 7 inches, so it's a pretty big figure. For size comparison, here's another Mattel figure, or just a standard raptor. As you can see, it is quite uh, large compared to that raptor. Here it is with a Mattel Stegosaurus. And here's another comparison with a smaller Mattel T-Rex. It's about the same size, uh, at least the same height as the Triceratops. A little bit longer you can kind of see there and here it is with the Hammond collection t-rex very nice uh, they actually look really nice together you can see there and for one final uh, size comparison just for fun here's the BOTM pentaceratops because I had it right here and why not do a size comparison with them because they're both really cool, but of course the Pentaceratops is much more superior, and it that looks actually pretty cool. Um, yeah, so there they are. They're about the same size. The Penta is actually a bit smaller than this absolutely chunk of a Triceratops, but I would say this one's about the same size. It's a little bit smaller than the uh, BOTM Triceratops. But yeah, this new Triceratops from Mattel, it's actually not that new, but it's new to me. So uh, yeah, it's actually pretty decent. It's a really nice figure, and it definitely looks really nice on the shelf. Uh, I'm definitely going to be displaying this one. I think it will look really cool, like fighting with horns locked uh, in between a uh, BOTM Triceratops or Taurosaurus. Uh, I'm definitely going to be displaying them together if I ever get them, when I get them soon yes hopefully maybe soon i hope anyways uh yeah this thing is actually max massive so be prepared for its massiveness <laughs> yeah it, it's much more massive than i expected and uh it's a cool figure uh the articulation could be a bit better but again it is a mainline figure so i guess it's not too bad for what it is and of course, it's actually honestly better than the Hammond Collection one uh, in size and uh, paint job. It's, I don't know, maybe not paint job, but it, I really like this one's paint job because it's got those osteoderms and like the belly is like a separate piece of plastic and it makes it look really cool. Honestly, just overall, this figure's really cool. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, We'll see you in the next video, hopefully very soon, because uh, it's actually the day before the day before the day before Christmas. 
um, as I am recording this. So yeah, that's cool. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Hello everyone and welcome to me eating a strobaffle because they're so good. My god. But today we're gonna be reviewing <laughs> why I think it was a good idea to eat a strip waffle before a review. So I'm just gonna wanna start the review while I'm eating a strip waffle. Because of this thing. It's so good. So freaking good. Mmm. Okay. Gonna do it this time. Uh, I got a Triceratops, which is actually not a part of my Christmas. It's actually, I got it something else. Which, I mean, I guess you could technically say it was for Christmas because it was a Christmas performance. But yeah, anyways. Uh, I'm gonna... What in the world? This thing will not freaking come out. What is holding it in? Aha, we have a tail. We're making po progress, guys. We're making progress. Um, what in the world? What in the actual donkey dung is going on here? This is literally, what in the world is holding it in? There's literally nothing here. <laughs> I can possibly be, oh, wait, maybe, maybe. Aha, we have it out. Uh, also, don't mind uh, these splotches of suspicious red um, liquid that got spilled on there. Don't mind that. Um, it, it's just Kool-Aid. Actually, no, it's a mix of uh, corn syrup and uh, food coloring. <laughs> yeah, 